Could you imagine having a spouse that you just simply couldn't communicate with? I mean, you, you can't talk to this person. You see things totally different. You see things one way, the spouse sees it a different way, and there's just never a meeting of minds. There's always a clashing. Well, oftentimes, many times in our body, in the church, there are people who, who are just like that. You want to be someone who is committed to the scriptures. And then what do you do? You inevitably you come up against, against someone who just doesn't see the scriptures the same way you do. And oftentimes the reason why they don't, if you are committed to studying the word, the reason why you don't see the same things is because they're not committed to studying the word. Even if they say so, they read it differently. They understand it differently. They want to see it as a, as a super spiritual book. Now, it is a divine book, but it also is a book. It's a book with human languages for that reason. Remember, it's God that gave us this book to humans. He didn't give it to us thinking that we are somehow going to be different. He gave us these words for a reason. And oftentimes you have read the book before you actually became a believer. And so the meaning is that there has to be something to these words. Now, whether you take or not, obviously we can talk about how the spirit works in that. But for me, there are some people that I just really don't like talking to it. I, I do so. I speak to because you're not really sure of their heart, especially when you, either you're online or you're at a distance. Uh, at a distance, you're in the you're on the stage or in the pulpit, and people in the behind on the pool, uh, in the pews, they may not actually. You don't know what they believe, what they think, what's going on in them, and so you go ahead and you labor. But there are some people that you get you're brought into a closer proximity, who I just find out, I don't really enjoy talking to you, not because I don't like the person. Uh, they might be wonderful people but they just don't get it. Why? Because they simply don't know how to read, not how to read in general, but how to read the Bible. The Bible is clear. We have been given this, this word to study it. And some people just don't want to study. They think the words aren't as important. Uh, they want to approach it as a, as a super spiritual book. Well, we've got a problem. And for those people, it, it, the Bible says this, it's hard for two people. How can, how do two men walk together unless they have made an appointment or how do they walk together unless they agree? If we can't agree, if we can't agree on the basics that these are English words or these are human words, uh, but it wasn't given to us in English, it was given to us in Greek and Hebrew. And therein lies a problem also. There are some people who hate the fact or despise the fact or just don't like the fact or confused by the fact that the Bible was not given to us in English. This is not an English book. It was translated. It's a translation. It is a commentary on the Greek and Hebrew. And so the Hebrew and Greek, that's the language that God determined to give us this book. I didn't make this up. You didn't make this up. You didn't cause it. Someone had out of their labor of love for the word, studied Greek or Hebrew and translated this so that others who don't value Hebrew and Greek or know Hebrew and Greek, or would like to know Hebrew and Greek, but just hadn't gotten there yet, that they can still read the Bible. Remember, William Tyndale's desire was to make it so that even the boy with the plow can understand these, these scriptures. So it wouldn't be written in Hebrew and Greek only, or in Latin, but of the common person. So you have people that literally died on the stake for people to read this book, and they just won't do it. My issue is there are some people, there's a passage that Jesus says of about, do not give what is holy to dogs. And do not throw your pearls before swine. There are some people, unfortunately, who even name the, name the name of Christ or profess to who you can't give this to. There are some people who you have to say, you know what? I found you ignorant. I must leave you ignorant. I have to leave you as I found you. It's sad to say, but that's the truth. There are just some people that just will not. You can't make a person learn. You can take someone to college. Doesn't mean they're going to graduate. Doesn't mean they're going to study. Doesn't mean they're going to do their homework. Same thing in high school, junior high, elementary. Same thing with the Bible. But you who are faithful, love the word, what are you told? Especially those who are in pastoral positions or leadership positions. He says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Look, he says, accurately handling the word of God, the word of truth. Who doesn't want to do that? Now, obviously, he's writing to, to Timothy, who is an elder, who is planning churches. But the same could be useful for us as well, who are not necessarily pastors, who might be lay members, who might be in the choir, who might be uh, whomever on the uh, the parking lot team, what have you. Study this word. Remember how Paul was, he brought these words and the Bereans went and searched what? The Holy Spirit to see if it was? No, they went and searched the scriptures because any one of us have the Holy Spirit and who's being led by the Spirit more? We don't know. What's going through might affect you, how you how you interpret something, how you were brought up might affect it. So what, what do you do? You go back and you study the word. 
that's what you do. Uh, that's why he says, he says to grow in the grace. Peter says, grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. You ought to learn of him. For me, it is a problem that I have with people. It's a, I deal with it, but a lot of people, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, there are a lot of people I just, I would rather not even talk to. There are people I would rather not give the time of date. Now I have to, but you see that this person is not intent. They're not keen on it. All I can do is all I can do. But there are just some people, and why I'm telling you this is that you need to determine so that you don't frustrate yourself. You need to determine who is actually interested in going through the scriptures. We've got to have a baseline. So if we can't agree that these words were not given to us in English, that they were given to us in Hebrew and Greek, and that there is a way to read the same way that we read everything else. If we don't have a, a set of agreed upon rules, then how can we communicate? If I say to you that you're ugly and you stink and you're no good and you get upset with me and I say, why? I, I, I just gave you a compliment. Well, you're going to just, your mind might explode because wait a second, you gave me these insults and you're saying that's a compliment. I know what an insult sounds like, I, and but I don't have the right to come back and change the rules. Like, no, no, no. Now we see that in society. Now we can change the rules. Boy means girl, girl means boy, good means bad, bad means good. Words have a meaning. And if the words don't have a meaning and we can't deal with the, the actual definitions, maybe we have to go to the Hebrew and Greek definitions and find out. But if we cannot agree to what these words mean and how we are to understand it, well, then how can we talk? And so someone that might wants to be super, super spiritual and they want to spiritualize a text. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, as much as you want to, it's going to be difficult for you to have a conversation. We have them because we're not sure if a person is intentionally that way or unintentionally. And so you labor with them for a little bit. Matter of fact, notice what Paul says. He says, preach the word when in season and out of season. That's how often you ought to be ready. He says, reprove. That means to convince them, show them that they're wrong. Show them that they're wrong. Rebuke. If they won't see it, then you, you have the right to rebuke. Listen, you're this, you're that. You need to get straight. You need this. You can rebuke a person. Uh, exhort to encourage them. And here it is with great patience and instruction. It's not a one time thing or two times or three. You know, I'm through with you. Some people you actually need to spend some time with and do so with great patience and um, love, considering you didn't get it right the first time. It took you a lot of times. Matter of fact, probably still not. But going back to what he says earlier about studying, he says now, but avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to further and godliness. If the conversation that you're having about the scriptures ends up going that way, leave it alone. Sometimes you have to be in the position where you say, you know what? You have to go. I have gotten to the point to where I don't mind uh, blocking someone from having a conversation with me because if I see it's going nowhere and they might get insulting or something like that, you know what? We're just not meant to walk together, which is fine. Maybe you need another teacher. Maybe you cannot be taught. Maybe you're incorrigible. Maybe you don't feel the value in trying to teach me if you think that I'm wrong. And so as you make this journey, the best advice I can give you is not to trouble yourself to the point to where someone either is not placing their faith in Christ after you gave them the, gave them the gospel. Someone's not choosing to learn after you've labored and you study and you put all this stuff together to show them and they still don't get it. That's not up to you. Sometimes all you can do is all you can do and then turn around and go another direction to someone who else could use you. So remember that. Remember this, that it's not always you. One, one plants, one waters, God gives the increase. That is, if indeed God does give the increase, it's not up to you. I had to learn that. And it's okay to turn around and walk away from someone. Maybe it's for someone else to do the job. Maybe you have to dust your feet off as the disciples were told to do in Samaria. That means that God was through with him because God comes back even after the disciples said, shall we call down fire from heaven? No, because what do we see in Acts 8? The Samaritans coming, becoming believers. And so maybe it's just not you. It's not up to you. We see someone who's not an, an original disciple, Philip, going down there and they believe. So don't let it bother you that someone is not listening. Understand that it's possible that God is dealing with them or it's possible they're not a believer at all. It's possible that they are a believer, but they're not going to be they're not going to be a very intelligent believer. Not all believers. It's a sad thing to say, but not all believers are going to be intelligent. That's fine. All you can do is all you can do. Do the best you can. But then be ready that if you see that you cannot um, move in this person's life, then be ready to move on. And it's OK. It's OK if a person doesn't value the scriptures like you do or they don't value them the same way. 
you make sure that you have a set of principles, practices, that you have sound, strong, consistent hermeneutics. Big word. If you run across someone that that devalues hermeneutics, uh, proper exegesis, leave them alone. I can promise you, you'll save yourself and them a lot of headaches. But just be clear. Ultimately, if you're trying to share something with someone and they're not taking it, it's okay. That's not your job to make someone receive what you're given. Amen.